Morning, students. Welcome to First and Second Corinthians Unit Three. Thanks for all your hard work to get our course off to such a great start, and I hope that the contextual, historical, and textual work we've done thus far is really illuminating this vibrant letter and this relationship that Paul carried on with the Corinthian congregation. This week we have a big challenge in front of us because we're going to be covering an entire five chapters, 1 Corinthians 5 through 10. So much is going on in these chapters. We could slow down and do an entire course on just a couple of these chapters. But let's make sure we have a sense of the major contours. Well, first off, in chapters 5 and 6, Paul appears to be addressing some information that's come to him by way of Chloe. Remember Chloe's people back in chapter 1 who had brought to Paul uh, the information concerning the factions, the divisions in the Corinthian congregation? Well, apparently Chloe's folks also informed Paul of an incestuous relationship between a man and his stepmother, and also in chapter 6, problems uh, surrounding Christians taking one another to court. And so we'll be looking at the particular dynamics of social status that might be governing what's happening in 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. A shift takes place, however, in chapter 7. We see in chapter 7 1, now concerning the matters that you wrote about. So apparently Chloe's people have delivered a letter to Paul from the Corinthian congregation, and the, the, the major issue that Paul addresses first in that letter is the issue of idle meat. In fact, chapters 8, 9, and 10, especially chapter 9, little known fact, are all about idle meat. This contest, this schism in the early church between the weak and the strong. We also see that schism in Romans. Trust me, this will make perfect sense as you unpack the Witherington material. What you'll find amazing is that although Paul identifies with the strong party, that is, he thinks eating idle meat is fine, he orders in chapter 8 that people who think like him should defer and cater to the weak for the purposes of the unity of the church. So th these are truly inspiring teachings that show us as Christians that we have a responsibility sometimes to set aside our point of view to set aside an issue that we might be passionate about in order to defend the unity of the church and to defend brothers and sisters that disagree and might even be offended by our intellectual viewpoint on that subject matter. So I'm looking forward to engaging with you around these important chapters from 1 Corinthians. I will be uh, grading and offering any comments that I have on your lists of research sources after you receive those comments in the next 24 hours, it's really open season for you to begin to read your sources and to take research from your sources that's going to help you write your paper down the road. In fact, just to get ahead, you might want to take a look at the next milestone of the research project that involves assimilating your research. This is probably the most time consuming and yet the most important part of the writing process. If you do this efficiently and thoroughly, it's going to save you so much work down the road because this research is going to comprise the guts of your paper. So feel free to go ahead and get started and let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to set up a conversation with me so I can walk you through how to do the paper most efficiently. Also this week you'll see that there's a reflection paper due. This is not a difficult assignment. It involves choosing any chapter that you would like diving into Witherington's commentary on that chapter and to producing a reflection paper. I simply want to ask you to do this. Follow the guidelines to the letter that are laid out in the PDF document uh, concerning this paper. That includes uh, matters of font and font size margins. That includes certainly the length and that includes the structure of the paper. I wrote this course so I attempted to be very very clear in how you can structure your paper to get the best grade possible. Really the only way you don't make an A is if you don't follow the guidelines or if your grammar is so poor that I have a hard time reading your paper. So if you have a hard time with grammatical constructions, make sure to use a proofreader. I'm here to aid you in your success. Feel free to email me if you have any questions or concerns. jrice at leeuniversity.edu. God bless and have a great week.